This is a cat and this is a bra. But what are they and why do we use them in quantum mechanics? Before diving into what they are and why we use them, I'm going to make an analogy. Imagine for a moment that our emotions aren't just fleeting feelings, but complex states. What if we could look at these feelings as just different states in a vast emotional universe? Each emotional state has a kind of twin version that lives in another space in this universe, called the dual space. Let's call these cats and the twins bras. Cats represent the emotional state, while the counterparts are used to somehow reflect on or analyze an emotional state. For example, suppose that you have a kind of mixed emotion. You want to know how much it overlaps with sadness. So, you combine a sad bra to find out how connected they are. And now we know how blue is our emotion. We can do the same thing for happiness to figure out the pink part of the emotion. Now we have more information about our emotional state, which is a superposition of two states, sad and happy. Keep that in mind that sadness and happiness don't overlap and they don't share anything, so we can say these combinations are zero. Now, let's consider you are sad and want to change your mood, but how can I change it? One of the options can be going to the beach, lying on the ground and listening to pounding of the waves. It can really be a mood changer. This action, which we'll call an operator later, acts on states and change them. So. Here we have a new emotional state. Now suppose exactly at this moment, a memory comes to your mind. We use a bra to act on the state that has changed by the memory to see how strong the memory is. This expression here is the expectation value of the memory operator and shows how much it has changed the state. Now let me make something clear. Quantum physics has nothing to do with our emotions. In fact, emotions are so complex that physics cannot explain how they work or why they exist yet. The fact is that we use a mathematical framework to talk about our emotions, the same framework we are going to talk about in the rest of the video. But it doesn't mean that our emotions are connected to quantum states. As far as I know, Physics knows nothing about our emotions. So let's not get too emotional and start talking about the quantum world. To describe quantum states and their transformations, we use a compact and powerful mathematical framework called Dirac notation, which is also known as bracket notation. Ket vectors represent quantum states that contain all the information about a quantum system, such as a particle. These vectors exist in a complex abstract space known as Hilbert space and describe the possible configurations a quantum system can be in, such as position, momentum, or spin of a particle. Bra vectors are the Hermitian conjugate or complex conjugate transpose of ket vectors. It means that if a ket is represented as a column vector, its corresponding bra is the row vector obtained by taking the complex conjugate of each element of the ket and then transposing it. Bra vectors live in the dual space of the Hilbert space, and this dual space consists of linear functionals, meaning that they take a ket vector as input and return a scalar. Now that you know what ket and bra vectors are, let's move on to inner products. In quantum mechanics, the inner product is a mathematical operation that measures the overlap between two quantum states. It is a complex number that provides crucial information about how similar or aligned the two quantum states are. If the inner product is zero, the states are said to be orthogonal, meaning that they are completely distinct from each other. Pay attention that the inner product is not commutative. Because we are dealing with complex numbers and the bra vectors contain the same elements which are complex conjugated. 
So it's safe to say that taking the complex conjugate of the inner product flips the two sides. The norm of a state vector is real and positive. And if the state is normalized, the norm is equal to 1. We can normalize a state cat by dividing the state by the square root of its norm. For example, take this state. The norm can be calculated to be 13. And the norm of our normalized cat is equal to 1. Two cats are said to be orthonormal if they are orthogonal and each has a unit norm. Now that you know what an inner product is, it's time to talk about the physical interpretation of the inner product. The magnitude of inner product is directly related to the probability of transitioning from one state to another. If a system is in a state psi, the probability of finding it in a state phi after measurement is given by this probability. This probability is zero if the states are orthogonal and completely distinct, and it is 1 if they are identical. It's very important to know that this probability tells us how likely each possible outcome is before we perform the measurement, and we haven't done a measurement yet. There is another kind of product called the outer product that combines a ket and a bra. To form a matrix or an operator, as you can see, if we have two n-dimensional vectors, the outer product will be an n by n matrix. The outer product creates an operator that can act on another quantum state. And the result is a new state vector proportional to psi, which is the ket in our outer product. The outer product has many applications in quantum mechanics. One of them is projection operators. We can project any state onto psi by applying this operator. Another one is the density operator. We use this notation to talk about mixed quantum states. Pi is the probability associated with each psi, and uh, we're going to talk about them in details later. We also have other linear operators in quantum mechanics. A linear operator can represent various physical observables like position, momentum, or energy. And when it acts on a ket, it transforms the ket into a new quantum state. The resulting state psi prime is determined by the operator A and what it represents in the physical system. For example, if A is the momentum operator, acting on psi gives you information about the momentum of the state psi. One of the key properties of linear operators is that they obey the principle of linearity, meaning that for any states psi and phi, and for any complex numbers alpha and beta, a linear operator satisfies this equation. In practice, linear operators can often be represented as matrices, especially when working with a finite dimensional Hilbert space. When a matrix acts on a state, which is represented as a column vector, it transforms the state into a new vector. Consider a special case in which the operator acts on a special state and only scales the state by A, without changing the direction of the state. These kinds of states are called the eigenstates of the operator, and the corresponding scalars are the eigenvalues. For example, for unity operator, all the states are eigenstates with eigenvalue of 1. There are some very important operators in quantum mechanics called Hermitian operators that have real eigenvalues. These eigenvalues correspond to measurable physical values. For example, the Hamiltonian, which represents the energy of the system, is a Hermitian operator and has real eigenvalues that correspond to the possible energies that the quantum system can have, and we call them energy eigenstates. The last concept I want to talk about in this video is the expectation value of an operator. We usually use the term observable instead of operators to refer to Hermitian operators which have real eigenvalues because in quantum mechanics, non-Hermitian operators do not correspond to physical observables. The expectation value of an observable is always real and is associated with the average result of the observable 
performed on identically prepared quantum systems in the state psi. So it doesn't necessarily correspond to any single measurement result, but rather on the statistical average over many trials. In fact, it is a measure of the average outcome of measuring the observable on a quantum system by a state psi. So I suggest you to watch this video to know more about Hilbert space, which is really important in quantum mechanics.